Welcome back to our discussion. Tolerance, has it gone too far? John on line eight. Hello, John. You're on the line. Hello, Christine. Yes, go ahead, John. How are things? Good. Go ahead. Tolerance and uh, radicalism, right? Mm -hmm. It is getting too far. Each other's societies, you know, the, the Muslims and other countries are killing each other. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I remember a friend of mine said to me, at a religious meeting, mm -hmm. we are here on earth for the interest of good, for the principle of the hereafter, which is a legacy we should all be working for, which is important. We got to work together as a country, as a nation, as world, as a world, and we know we can do it if we stop listening to the radicals. John, you bring up a great point. Now, Howard, this is something that we need to discuss further, what John is in, some of what he's insinuating here. First of all, he, he brought up a, a critical point that when you look at the roots of, our, of the, the foundations of the West, let's face it, you can't get away from it. It's, it's based on Judeo-Christian roots. Our democracy, our rights and freedoms were derived from such, yet People don't like war. Who likes war? People all want peace, and I think that's one thing that most of us could agree on. However, there comes a point where, as we see, there's an aggressor, there's an aggression, and it's met with a counterattack. And it's this counterattack that I see that people are having a problem with, and we should have a problem. Nobody likes violence. But at the same time, by criticizing the West, by partaking in that, we're emboldening our enemies, and I have concerns about this. It's part of the general uh, philosophic doctrine of postmodernism that, that swept America and the West in the, in the 60s, which is the, the philosophical underpinnings of cultural and moral relativency, relativism and moral equivalency. In other words, the Americans are just as bad uh, as the uh, Yemenites. Okay? Well, because the people say that we cannot distinguish. We cannot say one culture is better than another. And if you're going to take this position, it's the end of civilization. Because Americans and Canadians, for all the things we do wrong, we have free media that exposes them. People lose their elections because they've done something wrong. It's been exposed by a free media. And we do things better. And that's why everyone around the world wants to get into these countries and away from the countries that okay, don't have Okay, now I'm glad freedoms. you're making that point because somebody took an issue with me there. When I asked a question to one of our guests, where would you rather live in Iran or the United States? And that person said, neither. I have a serious issue with anybody supporting that answer simply where, because where you would you rather live in a country where women are getting stoned just for the accusation of adultery versus a country where you don't openly get stoned before a public square. I mean, I, I take your pick here. Okay. The, and what you just said there gives rise to this. The, the anti-Americanism of the intellectuals and it's uh, unfortunately, if you look at the history of Nazi Germany, the intellectuals were, were in favor of Hitler before anyone else. The British intellectuals were welcoming of Hitler before anyone else. If you look at the leadership of the Einsatzgruppen, the mobile killing units that killed so many Jews and others in, in the Ukraine, they, they were intellectuals, they were law professors, they were theologians. Why is it that the intellectuals lead these anti-liberal movements? It's because intellectuals dream of the perfect society, whether they were socialists mm -hmm. in Russia, okay, or they're, so they're Marxists on American campuses, they were Marxists at Occidental College where Obama studied Marxist-Leninism, his grandparents were communists, okay, most some people don't know that. They dream of a perfect society, and in the perfect society, everyone else who doesn't agree with you is right-wing or intolerant and therefore you don't listen to them, you don't invite them to speak, you don't have them in your newspapers and you shun them because they're so obviously evil, they're standing in the way of your perfect society and your mm. perfect society if you're not religious and you don't found yourself in the same principles that the founding fathers of the United States founded which was as the new Israelites as taking the values of justice and this is my message over and over to young people. It's justice that makes our world good. It's justice that protects the weakest person in our society that's given a legal aid lawyer. I'm a lawyer. They have presumptions against their guilt. They, if there's procedural unfairness. But justice now has been confused with vengeance. 
That's an anti-Semitic concept, and I write about this an awful lot. Yes. Vengeance is not, justice is, is done um, with, uh, to, to allege that people who are doing justice is, is vengeful is to confuse Shylock with the American justice system. Shylock yes. was vengeful because the society around him marginalized him and forced him to become crazy vengeful. For, for Mr. Spielberg to write, to, to turn the Munich uh, tragedy into a message that Israel's vengeful and to change the facts as he mm -hmm. did yes. and to use Tony Kushner the anti-semitic Jew as his screenwriter shows an example of how the values are completely screwed up Israel is seeking justice and we seek justice in the in the West and those who want to say that you can be have justice in a totalitarian state I say we have to stand up and say no 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 yes. liberal democracy is the best system and do not equiv equate a society that beats on women beats on Jews beats on Christians beats on everyone else other than their narrow Islamic Kills base mm -hmm. do not tell me that I have to respect those societies, that I cannot criticize those societies, and that I am racist if I say something in criticism of them. Let's go now to Hassan on line six. Hello, Hassan. You're on the line. Yeah, hi. How are you? Fine. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is my first time calling. I always watch your show. Christian, uh, listen, I, I, I do take issue with the gentleman when he says, I mean, uh, uh, what do you call First of all, amen to, the, to John, what he said. That's perfect, right, everything he said. I'm taking issue with what I mean, uh, Mr. Rottenbank said. Nobody hates the Jews, okay? Nobody hates, as a Muslim, I'm a Muslim. I'm not a practicing Muslim, born Muslim, raised Muslim. I'm a Canadian, okay? Christine. You mentioned you had uh, three uh, moderate Muslims. Wonderful uh, people that talked about, yes, uh, you had, the real uh, meaning of tolerance. Yes, okay. But, I mean, you had, I mean, uh, three moderate Muslims. Yes. I beg you, Christian, I beg you, okay, get a variety of Muslims on your show. Mm -hmm. Get the so-called jihadists on your show. Put them on the spot, okay? Make them squirm. Basically, put them on the spot. Bring them. <laughs> Try and bring them, okay? Put them on the spot. As to I mean, uh, Toronto 18, it's a police matter. Guess mm -hmm. what? The, the judiciary is taking, it's taking, the system is working. Most of them are going to jail for the I mean, longest time. Some of them are being acquitted, whatever. I mean, and house arrest. No. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand exactly yeah. what you're saying, Asan. I, I appreciate you. I, I will say, however, I, I applaud people like you. You obviously don't have hatred, but there are those who hate the Jews. There are those. And as you acknowledged, get a jihadist. These, are, these jihadists, they'll hate you, Asan. They hate the Jews. They hate moderate Muslims. They hate Christians. So from that point of view, I don't agree. As for having a radical here, I'm not sure this organization will allow them in. I want to thank you for your call. Send me an email, on the line at ctstv.com. Let's go now to Julia on line one. Hi, Julia. You're on the line. Hi, Christine. Hi, Julia. And uh, hello, Howard. Well, I've just been listening to two, two uh, different programs. Mm -hmm. I, and uh, I don't know if it's a time lag or something. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, are we there now? Yes, uh, listen to the phone, okay, because we're on a time delay. Yes, well, that's it, because I've been listening to two programs. Into the phone, okay. Uh, so, uh, what I've heard from the other callers quite clearly on the phone, um, part of it I don't dispute. And I've lost my train of thoughts because I was listening to the people on the phone. Okay, thank you, Julia. <laughs> Leisha on line two. Hi, Leisha. You're on the line. Hello, Francis on line eight. Hello, Francis. You're on the line. Hi, Christine. Hi, Francis. Go ahead. Um, thank you very much for the show you're doing. It's very great. I mean, um, tolerance is a very big topic. Um, I just want us to look uh, at the issue a bit objectively and not bandy together all Muslims. Of course, they are radical Muslims and they are moderate Muslims. And in the same vein, they are radical Jews and they are mod most Jews are moderate anyway. Very few of them are radical. And I think those are the people they call the Zionists, but very few of them. Israel is a great place. Jews are great people. And I mean, it's, it's an example in the Middle East. You know, but we have to separate all these compartments. 
and look at it objectively. Okay, One of the okay hang on, Francis. I'm going to allow Howard to respond to that. Thanks for calling in. Howard? Okay, I just want to say something about um, those who are moderate. And, and uh, as I said before, if you're moderate, take responsibility and speak out. Because I have to tell you that I've read the Quran. And in the Quran, there are certain comments about Jews and Christians that uh, I don't understand other than uh, to paint me and Chris Christine here as infidels. So I would like... And moderates as apostates. Okay, and moderates as apostates. So I would like to hear more Muslims come out, come out and categorically deny it or say that it's, it's not, it's, you have to interpret it, or we're going to reinterpret jihadism uh, in a different way. Now, I must say, in terms of my own religion, we have something called the Noahite laws. And the, we hold, although we have 600 odd laws that we have to follow, and I, I follow the Sabbath, uh, I, I don't drive on the Sabbath, and I have dietary laws, and all these uh, observances that I do, but I think uh, any Muslim, any Christian will go to heaven if they follow seven fundamental laws, not even the whole Ten Commandments, seven basic laws about not killing and basic, basic human, human Peace, laws. Yeah. So I think that we all, you know, should be able to get along. But I see one particular group of radical Islamists who are interpreting things a certain way. And if the rest of Islam would like to get up and say, we, we criticized you doing suicide bombings against Israeli children. But I wrote a book in 2001 and 2002, and there was very little from, from Europe from America, from other religions that were fundamentally criticizing the suicide bombers. Instead, they were prepared to say, yes, you have a good point. It's something about the occupation, but they didn't know what the whether that term was even legitimate or not. You brought up something critical and very controversial. That was one of the main things that I think was perhaps the biggest accomplishment we did on the moderate program that we did featuring um, Tarek Farzana and, and Raheel. And that was the difficult discussion about some of the contents of the Quran because they agreed that there needs to be some sort of reformation, some kind of a Muslim reform. And this has been ongoing and uh, an issue of huge controversy within the Muslim community. We must go for a break now. We'll